This book is called Pilgrim Cat by Carol Antoinette Peacock, illustrated by Doris Etlinger. On a breezy September morning in 1620, a stray cat prowled the docks, hunting his breakfast. The cat spied a plump mouse. He pounced and missed. When the mouse escaped to a ship, the cat followed, landing on the ship's deck. This ship was called the Mayflower. A cat just jumped on our boat, Father, Faith Barrett exclaimed as she waited with her family and other passengers to sail. Every sh ship needs a good... A few good mousers, said her father. He'll catch the mice on board. It was time to depart. Goodbye, England, Faith called as the Mayflower set sail. The passengers were headed across the Atlantic, leaving all they loved behind. Faith's family and so many others aboard were sailing to the New World so they could worship as they pleased. At first, the weather was calm. Then the autumn storms came. One day the Mayflower began to pitch and roll. Faith's stomach reeled. She reached for a bucket and got sick. Afterwards, Faith peered through the wooden grating over the hold where the food was stored. She looked down. The mouser, she exclaimed. The hungry cat was stalking a rat. Faith found some hard cheese that she had saved from supper and dropped it below. The cat batted the morsel with his paw. Then he pounced. I shall name thee Pounce, she said. After that, Faith looked for him, hunting alone or playing with the other cats. Every day, she fed him a piece of dried meat or fish from her own meal. Pounce began to wait for her. When the storms had passed, families were allowed to go on deck. Oh, how good it was to breathe fresh air. Throwing back her head, Faith twirled around and around. And then dizzy, she looked at her feet. Pounce, Faith said. His eyes closed, his tiny face tilted upward. The cat was sunning himself nearby. Faith scooped up the cat and brought him inside the ship. Thou art a beauty indeed, she marveled. Pounce purred. Oh, Pounce, said Faith as she stroked his head. This voyage is a trial. We are cold and so wet. Even our blankets are soaked. We eat moldy cheese and biscuits filled with worms. Oh, and then the storms. I do feel we will perish at sea and never reach the new world. For the rest of the voyage, Faith and Pounds were always together. Faith sang him all the songs that she knew. She told him riddles and made up stories for him. And at bedtime, Pounce slept on Faith's chest while the Mayflower swayed through the night. Then, after 66 days, the crew heard birds. Pounce sat alert. He heard them too. Leaves floated by in the water. Land ho, shouted the sailors. On December 16, 1620, the Mayflower sailed into a sheltered harbor. The ship anchored. Oh, at last, said Faith. Pounce arched his back, eager to leave the ship. Nay, I do, I, we do stay here to live while the men go ashore to build the houses, Faith explain, explained. Oh, she sighed. I fear we must wait a little longer, Pounce. After, and after coming so far... The icy rains of January pounded the ship. Food was running low. Then the great sickness came. The pilgrims were weak from their long journey. They had been cold, wet, and hungry for months. Now, chilly winds blew through the hatches of the ship. People began to cough, their bodies wrecked with fever. And then they began to die. Faith, too, got sick. She lay feverish. Her chest sore from coughing. Pounce curled by her tangled hair and would not move. Let the mouser stay. He'll do her good, said her father when the leader tried to make shoo the cat away. As Faith drifted in and out of fever, she felt Pounce's soft body against her neck and heard his soothing low purr. When her fever broke, she opened her eyes to Pounce, who had never left her.
By the end of the winter, half of the passengers were dead. Those who survived were sad and frail. The remaining 55 pilgrims moved into seven small houses that the men had built. "'Tis our new home," Faith told Pounce, carrying him into the house that the Barretts would share with others. At night in the loft, Faith could ha hear the wolves howling. "'I fear the wolves,' she said to Pounce. "'But mostly we all fear the natives. In England, they say those people are savage. I do see them up on the hills watching us. What are we going to do?' What are they going to do? One March day, a tall native strode into the little settlement. Welcome, Englishman, he said in English. His name was Somerset, and he had learned English from fishermen years or years ago. Several days later, Somerset returned with his friend, Squanto. Squanto came to live with the pilgrims. He, too, spoke English. He helped the pilgrims make friends with the native people who belonged to the Wampanoag tribe. Squanto showed the settlers how to catch eels with their bare hands. He led them to the best thickets for hunting deer. Most important, he taught the pilgrims how to plant corn, burying two or three herrings along with the corn and then covering the kernels and the fish with a little hill of earth. The fish would feed the corn, helping it grow tall. As Faith and the others dug holes, she could see her cat crouched over the tasty herrings waiting to be buried. Shame on thee, Pounce, she whispered. Quickly, she hid Pounce under her skirts, where she could hear him munching on a stolen fish. Everyone worked hard that spring. Even Pounce was very busy, catching the chipmunks and the squirrels that threatened the crops. He grew strong and fat. Then, on one night in June, Pounce disappeared. Three nights and then a week passed with no Pounce. Faith looked everywhere for him. Obediently, she milked the goats and she fed the chickens and gathered herbs from her garden. But at night, without Pounce, she cried herself to sleep. When she woke, her eyes were swollen and her cat was still gone. One day, Squanto led some men to the Eel River to fish. Faith and the other children followed behind. On the way home, Squanto stopped suddenly. He crouched beside a ho hollow log. Wordless, he beckoned to Faith. There was Pounce, five tiny ki kittens snuggling against her. Pounce, exclaimed Faith. She knelt beside her cat. Thou art a girl and a mother as well. Gently, Squanto lifted Pounce and the kittens and placed them one by one in Faith's apron. Faith walked home, apron held high, her eyes fixed on Pounce and her new family. In the shed behind the Barrett's house, Pounce tended to her kittens. As they grew bolder, the kittens ventured into the gardens and the fields. That autumn, the pilgrims harvested their crops. Fed by the herring, the corn had grown well, with enough to last the, the coming winter. The beans, squash, and pumpkins had grown in abundance. The pilgrims decided to hold a harvest celebration, much like those that they had known back home. Because they were grateful to their native friends, the pilgrims invited the Wampanoag. What a feast was prepared. For days, the men hunted and fished. The women cooked and the children helped everywhere. Pounce's kittens frolicked underfoot. One afternoon, as she helped bake cornbread, Faith looked up. A long file of Wampanoag guests walked into the settlement. When the pilgrims greeted their friends, Faith caught a glimpse of her friend Squanto. She smiled at him. The most honored Wampanoag and pilgrims found places inside, while the others gathered at tables set up in the gardens. A pilgrim leader stood. He thanked God for bringing them safely to this new world, for the rich harvest, and for their new friends, the Wampanoag. A Wampanoag leader gave thanks to Kitan, creator of all things, for the gifts of the ever-bountiful earth. Then the feast began. There were roasted turkeys, geese, and deer. There were oysters, cod, and lobsters. There was cornbread. There was squash, beans, corn, and stewed pumpkin. Finally, there were plums, crab apples, dried wild strawberries, and wild grapes. Faith looked down at her cat resting at her feet. Worn out by the excitement, the kittens slept beside their mother. The Mayflower did bring us here safely, Pounce. The Wampanoag are friends 
The harvest is good, and thou hast returned. God be praised. Pounce po poked her nose from underneath Faith's skirt. Faith dropped a juicy piece of meat. Pounce crouched, and with great relish, she pounced. Faith smiled. Oh, my little mouser. So much to be grateful for. And then from under the table, Pounce purred in agreement. 